Hey there, hey, half-ass half -ass travelers. Well, it's now time to talk about the Class B van. Yeah. And we purchased this van just for the 2023 cross-country road, road trip, trip that we just finished. Yeah. So now we're gonna tell you what we liked about the van, what we didn't, didn't like, like about the van, van, and then at the end, we're gonna let you know if that we would choose this van again for that type of vacation. So stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Rose. And I'm Dan. And, and we, we are, are the Half-Ass half -ass Travelers. Travelers. As far as the Sprinter chassis goes, this is a very comfortable driving position. I'm six foot tall and I can sit with my feet on the ground. Some of the features that this van has is one of them is adaptive cruise control. And I didn't think I was gonna like it, but I'll tell you what, adaptive cruise control is a lifesaver when you're driving for hours and hours. You don't have to have your feet stretched out on the pedals, your circulation's better. It's actually, it's a, it's a very good driving position. The Sprinter ha has some features that are designed to make uh, your drive safer. The blind spot monitoring is a must. And again, I already mentioned the adaptive cruise control. However, there's one feature that is just absolutely the worst feature I've ever seen. And I've seen people complaining about it online and that's the crosswind assist. It is way too sensitive. And it is really jarring when that crosswind assist kicks in. Say you're on the highway and you're passing a, a semi and you get a little gust of wind off the semi. This, the thing, it seems like the, the wheel is gonna rip out of your hands. I don't know who designed it. I hope that they take this criticism and as constructive and turn the sensitivity down or at least leave a way where we can turn the sensitivity down using the computer or, or even disable the system because it's, I think it's dangerous. And there was a couple times when it kicked in where I had to struggle to control the vehicle because it was just, and there was no wind. So I don't know what's going on with that system, but it's not, not, not working correctly. One of the features of the Sprinter is this compartment up here. Uh, when I'm driving, I can put my cell phone in there, plug it in, turn on the Apple CarPlay, and I can close the compartment and I don't have to worry about it. One feature we don't like about it is if you want to charge, if the, say the passenger wants to charge, if Rose wants to charge her cell phone, there are no USB ports down here. They're all up there underneath this, uh, this compartment. So what they really need to do is add some USB ports down here so we don't have to open the compartment or have the wires hanging out from the side uh, when we're driving down the road. Both front seats in the Sprinter van do rotate around and you can actually, we, we, the passenger seat we used a lot, we would rotate it around because it gave us an extra seat facing the back. However, the driver's seat's supposed to rotate around so you can use this desk, I guess, to put a laptop on or whatever. Well, I can tell you right now, if you decide to rotate this seat around, you're not gonna have any leg room to sit comfortably. The desk, we found it completely useless. We never used it. We would much rather see just remove this and give us some more storage space in the back because we ended up storing the uh, shades for the front windshield. We stored, what, the carpet back there yeah. and some other items that were, that were longer items. We can store those behind the seat. We never used that desk. We never rotated the driver's seat around. As far as storage goes in the Patriot, it is a challenge. I will tell you that we were very creative with where we found to, to, to store things. Uh, in the front doors, both sides, they have these trays that really you can't get to while you're driving, but we stored our extra bottles of water in here. It was good that we left the bottles up there at the front because the case of water we kept under here with our leveling blocks, and we always kept a case of water here but you couldn't access this water when the bed was down because you couldn't get between the door and the bed. So it's good that we had the waters up there because we could access them any time of the day or night. You can see that storage is a challenge. These two bins are containing everything that we need to run like the, the flushing and the macerator and the, and the fresh water and some tools uh, for repairs, whatever we had to do. The other things that we had, we had kept our chairs back here. So once we had all that full with, with the case of water and the leveling blocks, we couldn't go any higher than this because the bed comes right here. So this is pretty much everything we had. The, the charging cable goes here and that was pretty much it. Everything else had to be stored up front. 
we have a lot of little cabinets all around the sprinter van. The only thing that I really thought was a very, very poor um, feature of this van is that all the hinges are breaking loose off the top. This was our first major trip. And as you can see, the screws are coming out of the top of the, um, the support up there, which this isn't the first one. This is where his computer actually fell out of. That happened to these as well. Um, we've already replaced the screws, but I, I don't understand why they built it so poorly um, when they put these cabinets in. All right, we want to talk about moving around in a Class B, all right, because it's that, a challenge. That was uh, a tough part. Yes, yeah, we aren't the smallest people, or I am not the, Rose is, of course, but I am not the smallest person. And it's really tough when you're in the back and you need to get to the front when somebody's standing there. Like if Rose is standing here in the kitchen area and I need to get to the front, I can't really get past her. I mean, yeah, we're, we're close and all. But especially if I'm carrying something like the pillows when I'm trying to make the bed or the table. So when where I'm, do I have to I'm go? Taking the table. So, so we call this place up here, what do we call it, hon? The bullpen. We call this the bullpen because Rose can go stand over here in this area right by the door and then I can get by her and vice versa. So basically on the trip, we kept saying, go to the bullpen, go to the bullpen. Kept and saying, get out of my way. Rose That's would what come I kept over saying. here. <laughs> Rose would come over here in the bullpen and then I could get around her and then I could get back to the back of the van. Wasn't a big, wasn't a big deal, but it was a little bit of a, you know, yeah. you have to really like each other to live in a class B for a month and a half. I think so. Thank God. <laughs> All right. So I really like the kitchen area. Um, it's very efficient, but it has everything I need. And the only one issue that I don't like very much is that this faucet doesn't come out very far. Um, so when you're trying to wash dishes, you basically have to keep turning your pots and pans or whatever you have to be able to wash your dishes. So um, this feature right here, I'd, I'd really like that to be uh, to be changed. Yeah, and another, we recommend you replace the faucet. Yes. And another thing that I wish that they had, um, another feature, is to have a drop-down additional counter space so that we can on, on some kind of hinges just flip it up so I have more counter space when I'm trying to cook because I basically you can see that I don't have very much room once this is open and my sink is open so that would be really nice if I had some extra counter space. The Sprinter chassis is a nice chassis um, however it does have its uh, faults. The screen door what you have to do in order for it to stay quiet is to Snap it shut and push it all the way back or you're gonna have a lot of rattling going on. Another thing that really uh, bothers me is that this bathroom door, when you're going down the road, constant rattling as you're going down the road. There are no um, additional supports or, I, I really don't know, it, they just didn't construct this very well. One of the things I wanna talk about is one of the issues we had with the Sprinter chassis sliding door the compartment is very much airtight and it makes it a very nice quiet ride however it is so airtight sometimes that if you hit the door the sliding door to close a lot of times it doesn't close all the way i don't know if you can see this but the you look at the gap there is there's a gap in the door now how do we how do we deal with the gap in the door well this is what we have to do every time we close the door as the door is closing, we have to open another door and that lets the door close all the way. It's just a matter of just having too much pre air pressure inside, not allowing the door to close all the way. So that's our solution. One thing we were a little, you know, confused about was the placement of the heater. Uh, we, the heater outlet is down here underneath this flap. I don't know if you can see that. That's the heater outlet. And that's the only heater outlet. So when you run the heater, it basically puts the heat below the bed, which makes, I guess that makes sense. But the, with this flap hanging down, it kind of blocks the heat from coming out. And if this is down, I was a little worried because it get very hot. And, you it know, we, ha we basically had to just wet, you know, keep this flap up. You have if to we were move gonna run everything the heater. from underneath that part of the bed 
or <laughs> it gets very, very steamy down there. Yeah, and that under there also, I'll show you later from the back, but that is all the storage space we have, and it's very close to the heater. I would have liked to have seen the vent a little further out. I agree. Maybe under here, if they could have done it a little further forward. Uh, let me talk a little bit about some of the things, some of the features that the van has we didn't really t need or didn't take advantage of. Uh, one of those is the generator. We didn't really use the generator. We didn't need it. Because of the temperatures, it was always, almost always cool. We, I think we only ran the generator for a few hours, maybe to chart, to top off the battery. If the batteries needed to be, uh, you know, needed a quick charge, it was just as easy to start up the, the chassis, uh, start up the engine on the Sprinter van and use that, then we didn't have to go you know, for extra propane fills. Obviously we weren't using a lot of diesel. And that's another thing too, these AGM batteries, I don't know, you, know, you can't run an AGM battery down below 50%. I don't know if you're aware of this. If you run an AGM battery below 50%, then it loses charge and it loses the ability to charge fully. Uh, lithium batteries, you can run all the way down to zero, uh, but AGMs are not. I don't know that I would go with AGMs in the future, in a future RV, I think that uh, I know it's I know it's a, a larger cost, but there's just something it was disconcerting about knowing you only had 50% battery power. So those times when we were boondocking, uh, you know, it's always in the back of your mind. You know, how much power can I use? And with, if we would have had lithium batteries, it would have been less of a concern, I believe. Let's talk a little bit about the inverter issue that we had in Albuquerque. Uh, we didn't get a lot of information when we purchased the RV. Yes, they went over the operation of everything in the RV, but they didn't really go into that much detail. Uh, one thing we learned is that you do not want to cause an undervolt situation in the inverter. If you run on battery alone power, you cannot draw more than that inverter is able to convert from your batteries. Otherwise it damages the inverter. So if you attempt to run the, the, uh, Convection. convection cooktop and no the induction cooktop induction. and the convection, convection oven, oven at the same time it's very possible that you could damage or even fry out your inverter we have a sneaking suspicion this may have been one of the issues that caused our inverter problems we don't know for sure but uh it's, it's very possible when we were in boondocking in sedona that uh, we ran too much on that inverter and that may have caused the damage uh, but again we were never told this. It's, I'm sure it's buried somewhere in some manual. Um, always read the manuals. Nobody ever reads all the manuals. And it's very, to be honest, that would be very easy to miss. So remember that. Let's talk about this rear lounge. Honey, how, do, how much did you like the rear lounge here in, in this in this particular RV? This is one of the reasons we got it. I like it very much. Yeah, this is really nice to have back here. These windows are really nice. I mean, they, they just... Uh, they're very easy to operate. They've got the screen already built in. If you want to open the screen, of course you can. But it's really nice back here. Uh, when there's a wind blowing, I mean, we use these a lot. It blows the breeze right across the bed, right across the lounge. It's really nice. If we put the fan on up there, drawing the air out, then it's like an air conditioning with both the uh, windows open and the, and the air coming in the window. So it is a, that is a really good design we really like. Another thing we liked, I mean, other than, in addition to the rear lounge is, look at the size, look at how wide this is. This is our bed size, right? This is like a king, it's like a king size bed. And again, that was one of the reasons we bought the van, but this was awesome. I mean, we love sleeping in this van. It is very comfortable. The, we, we got the memory foam here. I mean, it's a pain to store it. There's really nowhere to put it, but I mean, this isn't comfortable enough, but with the memory foam and a couple of comforters, it's a cinch uh, to get a good night's sleep in this van. Now, <laughs> when it comes down to setting up the bed and tearing down the bed every day and every night, uh, that's- That's a pain in the neck. It is a pain. I mean, you, I, 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 <laughs> I, I'm gonna put it in the video. I may have already uh, shown you the pr procedure I use for making the bed. It doesn't take that long, but when you are, only two of you in the RV and you're not leaving the RV and it's tight. You're trying to carry pillows back and forth using the, you know, our bullpen or whatever. It, it, it's just a pain. Uh, one of the downsides of having the lounge and the bed is that you can't leave the bed made. And anybody who's been in a small RV knows what a hassle it is to keep having to make the bed every day and then tear it down uh, every morning. Uh, so in a future RV, we would think about, seriously think about getting one where you don't have to make the bed or tear the bed down all the time.
with the rear table, uh, we like the mount. It, it, it goes where we need to and it moves around quite easily and it's very easy to set up as you saw, but they should have put the mount on the other side. And in fact, I think the year after this model, they went ahead and moved it over there because it's hard to get around the table, especially when you're using these outlets. There, there are cords over here, especially if you have a laptop or something. Plus you lose usage of the seat if you want the table out of the way. It just seems like it would be better to put the table out of the way underneath this overhang. Let me talk a little bit about the solar, uh, solar power in this unit. We've got two panels on the roof. Uh, some of the other units I think may have three. Uh, the lithium ones uh, have three panels. Two panels was plenty. We could run the refrigerator and leave the battery switch on running just lights and stuff all day long. Uh, when we were boondocking during the day, it would keep the battery at 100%, no problem, just with the solar. Uh, so it's a great feature to have. Uh, we didn't really have to use the generator all that much because the solar panels pretty much kept the battery charged. And then when we're driving during the day, the chassis kept the uh, batteries charged. So uh, it's really nice to have the solar on the roof. Uh, highly recommend getting the extra panel if, it, if you can. Well, hon, are you ready to talk about the elephant in the room? Yes, I Would am. Would we purchase this van again for the trip that we did? The question is that. I would say no. <laughs> I would like something just a little bit bigger, but that was my opinion from the beginning. Um, for short trips, this van is fine. Um, we did well, yeah. uh, you know, going out and uh, a month and a uh, half for us was yeah. a little was a little bit long. Yeah, and I'll be honest, one, you know, two of the reasons we bought the van, one of one of them was the interior, the big fridge, and the big bed. That's a win. That was awesome. The other reason was to be able to access, you know, the four wheel drive, to be able to access those those places that we the, went, and the that was great. Places, yeah, that was fantastic. But as little as we used that, we we thought it would be more necessary to have four wheel drive. We thought we'd be going more places where we would have a tough time getting around. Right. And to be honest, we could have done a little bit bigger unit. Now, I, I, I I'm not talking about a Class C. A big one. I'm not talking about 30 plus feet. I think that if we had to do it all over again, we would probably go just a smidge larger, maybe a B plus just right. for us. And that way we could maybe do a, a slide out where we could not have to make the bed every day. Maybe a Murphy bed, those, those, uh, some, they, they have some that have the Murphy beds or even just some a, with a, two nice a separate bed on a yeah. slide out. Also, the shower was useless to us. We didn't use the shower. Not once. Not once on the trip. It's, it's pretty much useless. All the RV parks we stayed in had showers. When we stayed in hotels, obviously we had yeah. showers. When we were boondocking, we just would shower either the, you know, the morning before or you know, when right. we got to the next stop. So, yeah. ooh, stinky. No, uh, <laughs> but we didn't boondock more than one day in a row. So it really wasn't an issue. If we had, we might've used it, but really it's kind of useless. So it'd be nice to have a separate shower and bathroom uh, I agree. Because we would use the shower more, if, I think, if it was if we could stand up in it. Yeah. That would be nice. Uh, so I think I, I'm with Rose on this one. I mean, this was great for what we used it for. Uh, I think that if we did the trip again, and we probably will, we would strongly consider a B plus with a tow vehicle, because and that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. The uh, that's right. We didn't have a tow vehicle on the trip, so we. A lot of the, in fact, our ratings of our campgrounds took into account everything being walking distance because yes, we can just unhook. It's very easy to unhook and go, but uprooting everything and having to put everything away, it's, it's just a hassle. It's nice to have a tow vehicle. Um, you know, we didn't want to be trailering something all across the country because we thought it would be a big hassle. We thought we'd have access issues and whatnot, but uh, I can understand why people do the trailering of the tow vehicles because it's nice to have a vehicle there. And I don't think we didn't really go many places. There were a couple, but not many places where we would have had problems navigating You're with right. the tow vehicle. We hope you enjoyed that video. We hope you found it informative and entertaining. Yes. And we really, really love this van. I mean, for, yeah, don't get us wrong. This, yes, is, a, this the, is great. The, the Patriot, it's a great, it's a great van. Yes. Uh, we just we're thinking about possibly maybe in the future sure. getting possibly, something just a little bit bigger making some yeah a little bit less having yeah a little bit of a change less of a challenge for <laughs> a month and a half trip because we're hoping to take some longer trips 
across country. Yes. So, stay tuned. Stay tuned.